Hello my friends, my name is Forge and welcome to our brand new video. So today I'm going to be showing you on how to make custom mobs. Now this is something that many of you have been asking me about for a very long time. And well today I'm going to be delivering upon that and I'm just going to be talking about the basics of making mobs. I'm not going to be talking about any advanced stuff. So first off we're going to need to make ourselves a new behavior pack. So by the way I'm using a program called Bridge. It is a completely free program made by SolveDev and it is a very awesome program. But as of right now there is no mobile app. I don't know if you ever will release a mobile app on iOS or Android but I think that would be really cool. But let's go ahead and click on create for our behavior pack and we're just going to go call this test for the time being. And you don't have to worry about this. This is only if you're using the scripting API and things like that. So let's go and click on create. And now we have ourselves some folders created up. Now next up, we're going to need to make ourselves our research pack. So click on create the exact same name. I know a very original name, the test pack. Let's click on create. And now our files have been created. Now the next thing is we're going to need to come up here to where we have ourselves new file. Now the cool thing about this program is that you can make yourself like pretty much any kind of thing for your add-on. So like you make your entities, your biomes, you can also make the different features. I mean, there's some really cool things that you can do with this program. But we're going to focus on this for the time being. So we're going to go ahead and call this, uh, what should we call this? You know what, let's call this the test mob. I know, we're going to be using that name quite a bit today. But then we have ourselves templates. So you can go ahead and choose from a template of all the different entities that are inside the game. For me, I'm going to be using the zombie template. So let's go ahead and click on zombie. And let's click on create. Now our entity has been made. Now inside the description section. Now the identifier is going to be the mob that you're making. So we're going to need to make ourselves the suffix first. Which is going to be the Minecraft part. So we're just going to go ahead and call this. Uh, let's call this tester. And then we're going to call this zomb. I mean why not. It's a very original name. So let's go ahead and click on add. And now the name has been replaced. So then there's those materials. Now the materials. That's going to be on what it's made out of. Like is it made out of zombie? Is it made out of skeleton? Is it made out of a shulker? Is it made from a banana? Okay, maybe not the banana part. But still the material is just going to be telling the game on what the mob is based off of. But we also get ourselves the minimum engine version. You can actually go ahead and delete that. You don't need to worry about that whatsoever. So anyway, we also get ourselves the textures. Now textures is going to be obviously the texture of the mob. So you're going to go ahead and come inside the textured folder. You're going to go ahead and make yourself another folder which is called entity. Then the texture of your mob is going to go inside the entity folder. Now you can also go and make yourself another folder if you have yourself a mob with multiple textures. I mean it's pretty much up to you. And by the way for the textures you must use .png. You cannot use any kind of file formatting but that. But we also got ourselves geometry which is going to be the shape of the mob. I like to use a program called Blockbench which you can use on mobile as well which is really awesome. So you can just go and make yourself custom geometry for that mob. And then you can just go and put it inside of there. So then we're still spawn egg. Now spawn egg we're still the texture. And then we're still the texture index. Now for scripts is just free animations right here. And I don't know much about scripts. So I do apologize. I won't be able to explain very much. And no this is not the same thing as the scripting API. This is completely separate. But we also got ourselves animations. So the animations you can also make custom animations. By using Blockbench as well. And just like with the script, I won't be able to explain very much about the custom animations. Because for me, I don't really make too many custom animations. Which the animation controllers, basically they're going to be telling the game on how to run the different animations. So down here we have ourselves render controllers. Which is going to be how the game renders the mob. And then we have ourselves enable attachables. Which just tells the game if the mob can have like an attachable chest plate or something else. But we're going to go ahead and move all the way to the next thing. And that is going to be the behavior pack. Now inside the behavior pack we're going to yet again click on new file. And then we're going to entity. Let's go ahead and choose the same thing. We're going to go ahead and go for zombie. This is going to call this test. Let's click on create. And by the way you have to remember the identifier. Because the identifier is very very important. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that right there. And I'm going to come over to here. And now we're going to the description again. Identifier. And let's go ahead and just copy and paste this right inside of there. So that way it's going to work inside the game. So we have is spawnable. Make sure that's set to true. So that we can go spawn in the mob. Is summonable. Make sure that's also true. So you can use commands. And then is experimental. You can have that be either false or true. Now the component groups. Basically they're just groups of a bunch of different components. Which the events can go ahead and draw from. So if we have ourselves entity spawned. It's going to go ahead and click on randomize. 
and it's gonna randomize it's just gonna randomize between three of the different component groups. So like we have cells like baby, we have adult and a zombie jockey. So as you can see, add component groups, uh, adult can have equipment, we have add component groups, and then we have baby and can have equipment, then we have add component groups, and then we have baby, then zombie jockey, then equipment. And that's basically all there is to it. So it's just a bunch of groups with a bunch of different other components. So anyway, we're going to go and talk about components next up, which components basically, they make up how the mob works inside the game. So like we have results attack, which tells the game how much attack damage the mob can have. We also have results loot, which is basically the loot tables. We have the environment sensor, which tells the game how it's going to transform into a drown when it's underneath the water. So then we have results the type of family, which if I click on family, we have zombie, undead, monster, and mob. Which means if you're going to set this to monster, it's going to go and despawn when you set the peaceful mode. But you can just go and experiment with the different component groups if you really want to. But I'm just going to click on components and this is where you're going to be able to go and add in them some more components if you really want to. So if you want the mob to eat a block, then for some reason, well you can go and do that. You can also have yourself eat carried item, find mount, find cover. I mean there is a lot of different things that you can go and choose from inside this list. It's just really, really awesome. So anyways, that is pretty much it for what I want to talk about with this. And we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. And that is going to be the text. Now if I go ahead and click on this right here, it's also the language pack. And you're going to go ahead and want to name your mob. So if I come down here, you're going to first off type in entity. I really wish that there was like an autocomplete here. I think that would be pretty nice. But then we're going to go ahead and click on dot. And then we have results the name of the verb mob, which if you remember, we have cells test zomb, and then we're going to go and click on dot name, and then we have cells equals, and then the name of our mob, which we're going to go and call this zomb. So then we have cells the other one, which is going to be item, and then we have dot spawn egg, dot, and then the name of our mob, then dot name equals spawn zomb as the name. So that's basically it for that. So I'm just going to save that. And the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go and load up Minecraft and go and see if everything works properly. Now, of course, we didn't add in like any custom geometry. We didn't add in any custom textures. I'm going to go and leave that up to you guys. This video is just kind of meant to go and show you the basics of making custom mobs. Nothing too advanced. But we're going to go ahead and come down here, use experimental gameplay. We're going to go and come down here to our behavior packs. And I recommend enabling the behavior pack first because we'll go and activate both packs at the same time. So let's go and come to here, results test, and, and then there we go. So it has now been activated. And we're going to go ahead and click on create. And we're going to go ahead and see if a spawn egg works. Now sometimes we might run into a mistake kind of like this. Where it just says item.spawnegg.entity. Because I forgot to add entity to the name. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go and put that inside there. Then dot. And now that should be working properly. And this is make sure that our behavior pack is working right. So there we go. And yeah everything looks like it's in tip shape. We just forgot to go and save that right there. Cool thing about Bridge is that whenever you go ahead and apply the pack and it's within the development resource pack or behavior pack section, then you can just go and load up the world without making a completely new one. It's just going to go ahead and keep on updating that pack when you enter that world every time, which is really awesome. And look at that. We found ourselves a little band in another portal. That's actually pretty cool. Or ruin another portal, okay, whatever you want to call them. And there we go. We got ourselves our spawn egg. And I can just come right down here, go and spawn in our mob. And since it's just a standard zombie, well, of course, it's not going to have anything special inside of there. But anyway, that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you with the basics on making custom mobs. Now, down below in the comments, I do want you to let me know if this helped you out and if you enjoyed. Now, down below in the comments, I do want you to tell me if this did help you out one way or another. And if you enjoyed today's video, then also let me know by leaving a like on it and subscribe so you never miss an upload. For now, I hope you have a logical day and I will catch you next time. Bye.